Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a brand new video. My name's Katie and I thought I'd do a little video dedicated to one of my favourite painting supplies. One or two of you may have mentioned, especially from the last Witchy Things video I did, for me to make a video going a little bit more in depth into the Knicker poster colours. And well, as these are one of my favourite gouache poster kind of paints to use, I just couldn't resist but create something with them. So the set I have, I've had it for quite a few years now, is the 12 tube set and these cost me about £20 a few years ago from Amazon. I managed to pick up another set as well shortly afterwards for a similar price and figured I should leave it at that, at least use up what I've got first. The colours included are white, lemon yellow, chrome yellow, orange, carmine, cobalt violet, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, chrome green, viridian, burnt sienna and soft black. Now I do apologise how bad the swatches are at the start. I hadn't really used them for a while, they'd been sat there and you know how paints can get if you leave them. the the binders and the pigments separate after a while and you have to smoosh them around in the tube a bit or pour a big amount into your palette and I didn't want to waste any paint there. So a dot on the page and a run with a wet paintbrush had to do. I also think this painting I'm doing demonstrates the qualities of the paint I like and then I'm not needlessly wasting any either. Of course, I know you lovely lot quite enjoy my dragons, so I thought that would be a great vessel to start. I'm also going to commit to doing a little series of gouache paintings using the different gouache supplies that I've collected over the years. And with each instalment, there'll be a fresh dragon. Other paints I've got are the Holbein gouache, which I haven't tried out yet, as well as the Hemi. I did buy a replacement palette, so it would be nice to unbox again with you guys and see if my opinions are the same there. I've also got the more budget-friendly Hobbycraft versions. I'm kind of curious to see how they work, as well as a few other brands that have appeared either in subscription boxes or I've just picked up because they were a good price and I thought, well, let's give them a try at some point. But those are going to be for upcoming videos and let's concentrate on the dragon now. Similar to the Himi horoscope dragons I did a couple of years ago, I thought I would have a bit of a celestial type theme going on here. I thought I'd base this dragon, I guess, on stars and I thought enclosing it in a diamond shape would just add a little bit more variety compared to what I did with the Himi ones. By the way, comment down below if you remember the Himi horoscopes. The paper I'm using is the Frisk Watercolour Paper Hot Press 300 GSM. I do like a nice smooth surface to work on with my gouache as I use it quite thickly and I like to, I suppose, capitalise a little bit on those nice flat matte properties. I tend to find, for me personally, if I use anything too textured, it kind of defeats the object really of having that nice flat surface. A little tiny bit of texture is okay, but nothing over the top. So for the background, I mixed the cobalt blue with a hint of the soft black. And I also used the cobalt violet again with that soft black and just ever so slightly merged that background together. For the dragon's body, the cerulean blue with a bit of extra white in there just seemed like the perfect mid-tone before I add all of those scale details and tonal variations on there. And obviously it's a lot brighter and lighter than the background because I really want this dragon to stand out and be as bright and shining as a star, I guess. So why do I like these paints so much? And I guess at this particular moment in time, why do they stand out against the other gouache paints for me? Well, it's mainly down to the application. I don't know about you guys, but as I've mentioned before, I like to use this paint quite thick and take advantage of those opaque properties. And once I've mixed those paints where the, you know, where the binder had separated from the pigments, once that had returned to what it should be, I tend to find I can find that sweet spot to work with them quicker, I guess. 
when I've used other gouache paints before, I don't, I, I just cannot use it neat from the tube. I have to dilute it ever so slightly. And figuring out those ratios whilst doing that obviously differs from brand to brand, but for some reason I can find it straight away with the Nicker poster colours. I like to have it where it's diluted to a point where it, I guess, flows nicely off the brush. However, I don't want to compromise that opacity and I tend to find that when I do just dilute it a slight bit, I don't seem to have as many issues with streakiness and uneven drying. That's not to say that doesn't happen at all and maybe this is user error and it's just something I need to, I guess, pick up on a little bit more moving forwards. For example, the blue background, that first layer did not go down great and I had to go over it again. But that also brings me to another good point I like about these paints is they can handle the layers quite well. I'm not saying this is necessarily a bad thing with gouache and again it could be down to user error but I tend to find that when I put a layer over the top just like I'm doing now it's not going to bring that layer beneath through. That is actually one of the qualities I really like about the Turner Acryla gouache but obviously that's a different formulation and it pretty much becomes waterproof when it's dry however the gouache the traditional gouache gouache and these poster paints it's a different story they're going to remain water soluble even when they are dry that also brings me on to a second point with these i've poured them into little pans before just like off camera more than anything just to experiment and i do tend to find they're still quite usable once they've been dried into little pans are they going to work as good as they do straight from a tube Probably not, however, if you're travelling for example and you just want to take a few colours with you instead of having to take the tubes and all the mess that comes with, it works quite well. I also find as well that if I did want to dilute them and use them I guess a little bit like a watercolour, that vibrancy isn't compromised. I've had these for quite a few years now and obviously I've played around with them and experimented with them. And even when I have really watered them down, they do behave quite nicely to use as a watercolour. It's just for me, as a preference, I just tend not to go down that route. And well, I could just use watercolours if I wanted something to look like a watercolour. I also really like how versatile these are for mixing colours with too. Even though I only have 12 base colours to work from, I feel like I can quite happily mix together my own preferences. For example, the dragon's body and the dragon's wings right now, they're all mixed colours. And they pretty much dry how they go down too. There might be a slight discrepancy where it might just dry a smidgen lighter, but it's not really anything massively noticeable and it's not going to hamper the process of painting. I'll address a couple of the cons though, and again, referring back to user error, sometimes the colours just will not go down evenly. So that blue background, near to where I'm painting now actually, it's not entirely flat. It's better with that second coat on, however, for some reason, maybe the dilution ratio was a little bit off. But very occasionally, you will get it where it just doesn't dry super flat and in this instance it's not really an issue because I wanted to flick some paint on there and add some more galactic stars in the background and there's enough details over the top there to draw your eye away from it. But I do tend to find that with certain colours anyway, especially within gouaches, they're going to behave like that and I guess I could have added a little bit of white in there just to make it a little bit more opaque. But then I would have lost those deep, rich colours that I wanted in the first place. And I guess it's just something I'm just going to have to play about with a little bit more. Now for light fast rating, I, I don't know. It's all in Japanese and I couldn't tell you. I do have a feeling though that poster paints are notorious for not having amazing light fast ratings. So if you're wanting to put a painting of this on your wall, you might have to consider putting it behind some UV filtered glass and definitely out of direct sunlight. However, these paints, I guess, aren't massively designed for long-term work as such, at least in its original state. 
I believe these have been used by Studio Ghibli for their backgrounds on their animation and they're not going to really be up on a wall in a museum somewhere. The flatness of them is designed so they can be photographed well and obviously used underneath a camera and to be reproduced in that sense. And if anything, these are just good for designing your own prints with, if anything. Or if you just want an enjoyable painting experience and a sketch pad, they're ideal for that too. But be mindful that I wouldn't advise painting on pages that are going to close together on each other. The particles in both gouache and poster paint are much larger than what you would have in watercolour and thus are a little bit more prone to leaving the page, especially if there's any friction applied. So yeah, if you've painted on two pages in your sketchbook that face each other, there's a chance there might be transfer there. So, you know, if you're going to do this kind of work in your sketchbooks, please bear that in mind. And I'd also go as far to say if you're going to use them like a watercolour, definitely treat them with that same level of caution too. And one last thing I enjoy about these paints is they are fabulous for when I do the finer detail work. Again, because you find that sweet spot of consistency with the paint, it just means I'm not faffing around for ages trying to make one just to put on a rigger brush to use for about five seconds. So yeah, they're a hit for me because of that. If you do decide to get some of these paints, I would definitely wait for them to be at a good price. Definitely shop about. Like I say, I was really lucky both times I managed to make a purchase on these. I got them for £20, but I've seen them onwards from £40, so definitely at least wait for them to be at a good price. Anyway, you lovely lot, here is the finished piece. I'm really happy with how this one came out, and it was great fun to play with these beautiful paints again. Of course, as always, drop a comment down below letting me know what you guys think of the paints and the painting. Oh, and why not have a little guess at what kind of space or galactic themed dragon I'm going to come up with next. And hopefully the next gouache set I use will be just as fun. Now there should be a couple of videos on screen that I think you should enjoy, so why not give one of those a click? As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye!